You're watching ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. The U.S. could be sending more assistance to the Ukraine soon to help the country reach success on the battlefield. Washington correspondent Basil John reports on the latest. Good evening. Ukraine continues to face pressure from Russia, and that has countries like the U.S. stepping up support so Ukraine can handle the challenge. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is in Europe to meet with the Ukraine Defense Group as NATO continues to urge member countries to equip Ukraine with what it needs for an extended war with Russia. 2023 will be a difficult year, and we need to support Ukraine for as long as it takes. And NATO Deputy Secretary General Merchek Jona says member nations need to replenish their own stockpiles for any future conflict. We need to ramp up our industrial capacity to manufacture weapons and ammunition. NATO allies are trying to meet the demands from Ukraine for more powerful military tools, with some countries adding tanks to the battlefield. And Ukrainian troops are now in Oklahoma for training on using the Patriot missile system the U.S. is sending. We are determined to make sure that Ukraine has what it needs to succeed on the battlefield. So far, the U.S. has approved more than $25 billion in security to Ukraine over the past year. We should never lose sight of the fact that the United States of America is the single largest donor of military and economic aid to support Ukraine's self-defense of any country in the world. The new Republican-led House says it wants to support Ukraine, but it wants more oversight instead of sending what they call blank checks. Reporting in Washington, I'm Basil John. A Massachusetts man already facing a charge of misleading investigators in the search for his missing wife has now been charged with murder in her disappearance. Shackled and handcuffed, Brian Walsh appearing stoic as he goes before a judge on murder charges, in the case of his missing wife, Anna, pleading not guilty. Prosecutors say they have evidence. He searched for ways to cover up what he had done. 5.47 a.m. Ten ways to dispose, dispose of a dead body if you really need to. <clears throat> At 6.25 a.m. on the 1st, how long for someone to be missing to inherit? Investigators believe Walsh used hundreds of dollars in cleaning supplies they say he purchased the day after his wife went missing in order to hide the evidence. He's being held without bail and is due back in court next month. Investigators have not found Anna's body. A dog owner decided to let her off the leash to play catch at uh, Gallup Park in Ann Arbor, Michigan, when the dog ran onto the ice with pretty terrifying results. It all started when Frankie the dog saw swans playing on the water and wanted to chase them. She then got a quick lesson about playing on thin ice. All of this captured by police body cameras. She's losing it, and I'm thinking, for sure, I'm witnessing her, and it was terrifying. Stay, Frankie! Stay! Frankie. All right, police and fire realizing the ice was too thin to walk on, so they grabbed a battering ram, throwing it to break a path with one last throw. She made way. Because of that work, Frankie now home safe and sound. Her owner thanking first responders for saving her life. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy. Weather rates certified 11 years in a row. All right, when you see the swans, you just have to chase, right, Alana? No, Frankie. Glad <laughs> we want to tell Frankie, no, don't do that. I know. I, I think she got the message. I'm so glad she's okay. But we have to be careful with the ice this time of year, especially mm -hmm. because we've seen those warmer storms with our southwesterly flow bringing in rain to our valleys. So we have to be careful. So across the state, across the country, you have to be careful. And when you talk about our state, tell me this isn't the prettiest view you've seen. Big Cottonwood Canyon today, we saw the sunshine and look at all that snow. It is absolutely stunning. Big Cottonwood, the home of two of the snowiest resorts in U.S. right now. Yeah, that's right. Utah makes the list four separate times. Mammoth Mountain in California beats us out, but look at our snow totals. This is, as of today, the snowiest spots, and that includes both of the resorts in both of the Cottonwood Canyons. Oh, healthy snow amounts. We love to see them. And as we look at out in the last 10 years, it'll give you an idea that, gosh, it's been a while since we've been able to flex our snow muscles. We're sitting at 430 inches for this year. We're only 
I would say maybe one storm away from 445. That was the total for snow last year, and this is the snow to date. So you can see we already have more snow than seasons past. That includes in 2017 as well as 2014. So healthy snow amounts, and we want to keep that going. And hopefully we do with snow on the way for a portion of the state. Clear skies and quiet conditions, and it's cold out there. The ABC4 camera kind of showing you temperatures at 30 degrees. We touched on the water year and how we've been doing in Salt Lake. Last three months above of average. Now it started on October 1st and it looked a little meager coming in below average, but we've already accumulated more than seven inches of rain in Salt Lake on a typical year. 15 and a half. So we're on track here and we want to keep it that way. We don't want Mother Nature to turn off the spigot. High pressure will do that, but this high pressure is breaking down, increasing clouds moving in from the west. That's where our next storm system is coming in from as well. It's a system that's going to drop in and it's going to really target central and southern Utah. I'll show you what I mean. Cold air in place with 20s and 30s. 37 for that high in Salt Lake, same number in Blanding. 30 over in Milford, 47 in St. George, running below average. And that colder air, is going to be pretty stubborn as we get through the next couple of days. It's going to stick around, which means even in southern Utah, we've got pretty chilly conditions. Futurecast shows us the progression of this storm. Clear tonight with increasing clouds. Here we are by 6 a.m. and the moisture's knocking on the door. That front's going to come in. The low actually dives. Here we are by the afternoon hours. Southern Salt Lake County into Utah County. That's our best chance for the north, but look at the west desert. That's where we really see the storm fill in. That moisture hangs on on the western side of the state in central and southern Utah. This is Thursday at 7 p.m. Heavier rain, thunderstorm potential near St. George, but also snow Friday morning. You can see why the system tracks over to the east. We stay dry in the north as we roll into Friday and then things quiet down. Let's look at potential snow totals traced to an inch in Washington County. Our southern valleys at one to four, two to five in our mountain valleys, six to twelve for the high country. And for the north, we could get maybe a trace to two inches, but you saw the system really targets central and southern Utah. Cold temperatures for tomorrow. We've got 30s and then we've got teens on the eastern side of the state taking a look at the next seven in St. George. The chance for Mixed precipitation in Washington County is there with cold temperatures Thursday into Friday. Dry to follow. Here's the Wasatch Front, and you're going to see those numbers in the 30s, staying below average. A chance tomorrow, and then again on Sunday with another quick hitter of a storm. Sundance this weekend. Yeah. And it's going to be the sun dancing because it's going to be pretty quiet up there, and it'll be cold. Just amazing all the snow we're getting around here. Yeah. We got enough celebrities up here, don't we, with you two? <laughs> yeah. I mean, they can't go anywhere. <laughs> really.